Daniel Kinahan is the killer of Eddie Hutch. Will Eddie Hutch's elimination mark the ultimate downfall of Daniel Kinahan? The Guardia adamant to ensure it happens. Guardi versus Kinahan. How long will Daniel evade the law? Is the noose tightening around Daniel Kinahan? It looks like things are coming full circle for the sports-washed, mighty kingpin of the Kinahan cartel, who sports-washes illicit activities by working as a boxing promoter. Those of you following the Kinahan vs. Gardi saga will be thinking they already did when the US announced sanctions on them, closing the lid of almost every financial activity associated with them. However, that's not the case. You will be surprised to know that up until now, Daniel Kinahan was neither wanted nor sought by any state due to legalities involving extradition and interstate relations. I will delve into this fine yet very important detail later in this video. Before that, let's take a look at the recent developments in the Kinahan vs Gardi saga that has proven to be yet another blow for the organised crime group. Recently, Gardi has recommended implicating Daniel Kinahan for Eddie Hutch's elimination a friend turned foe of the cartel kingpin. The incident happened in 2016, a few days following a deadly and dramatic attack on Daniel Kinahan in the Regency Hotel. While Daniel escaped the hit on his life, his lieutenant and close aide, David Byrne, wasn't as fortunate. Daniel fled the country and escaped to Dubai after this attack, but apparently not before avenging his aide's death. His fury emerged in the form of an attack on Eddie Hutch, brother of gangster Jerry the Monk Hutch, who came to be a casualty in the Kinahan Hutch feud. As the law enforcement is closing in on the Kinahan kingpin Daniel Kinahan, with their assets frozen and authorities waiting for a chance to swoop on them, the Kinahans are speculated to have fled to Pakistan or Afghanistan. But Gardi absolutely do not agree with this speculation. They believe that the Kinahans are still bolted in Dubai, their luxurious hiding abode, conducting meetings and participating in nefarious activities. However, there are reports that Dapper Don Christie Sr. is trying to strike a deal with Iran and Russia to get them out of Dubai. The Guardi chief maintains that any such attempt would only result in their arrest. The Guardi are piling up charges against the Kinahans to get them out of their bolt hole and the recent recommendation is a part of these efforts. The Guardi have recommended to charge exiled cartel boss Daniel Kinahan for the elimination of Eddie, brother of the notorious gangster The Monk. Daniel is one of the ten suspects recommended to be charged with multiple offences in connection with the fatal shooting. Eddie Hutch lost his life outside his home in Dublin's north inner city on February 8, 2016. It appears that Daniel was allegedly caught on CCTV near Eddie's home a few days before the hit on his life. According to Irish independent crime correspondent Ken Foy, Daniel had a heated argument with Eddie Hutch, who appeared to be shouting at him from a window of his home, and Daniel was shouting back at him. Daniel left the scene and a few days later, the Regency Hotel incident happened on February 5th, 2016. You can fathom the mounting tension signalling things were about to go south soon. They did on that fateful day of February 8th, when two gunmen targeted Eddie Hutch, a taxi driver, as he pulled up outside his home. After the attack, the police found an abandoned vehicle, presumably a getaway car, a short distance away. Gardy believe Eddie Hutch's death was the payback for Kinahan Lieutenant David Byrne. Notably, Eddie wasn't the only one to be targeted by the Kinahan cartel for association with the Hutch gang following the Regency Hotel incident. In fact, the gangland feud has taken 18 lives, beginning with the elimination of the monk's nephew, Gary Hutch, in Spain in 2015. Nevertheless, Kinahan was never questioned in relation to this elimination, but the Guardi now believe they have enough evidence to recommend his prosecution in the case. A file containing the recommendations was submitted to the Director of Public Prosecutions in early March, following a lengthy and complex investigation. The Guardi conducted 1,300 investigative tasks, which included taking 500 statements. They have collected 200 exhibits and examined tens of thousands of hours of CCTV footage for the case. Thirteen arrests have been made so far regarding this investigation. The narrative intricately reveals the relentless efforts of law enforcement in combating the criminal underworld, particularly within Dublin's narcotics scene. 
The Regency Hotel attack, a pivotal moment in this ongoing saga, serves as a catalyst for intensified police action. The subsequent targeted assassination of Eddie Hutch underscores the urgency and gravity of the situation, prompting a comprehensive investigation. The meticulous detail of police work showcased in that text, from the collection of 500 statements to the analysis of tens of thousands of hours of CCTV footage, underscores the dedication and perseverance of law enforcement officials. Despite the challenges posed by elusive suspects and the complex web of criminal activities, the police demonstrate unwavering resolve in their pursuit of justice. The recommendation for Daniel Kinahan's prosecution signifies a significant breakthrough, reflecting the culmination of painstaking investigative efforts. The collaborative approach between law enforcement agencies is evident in the coordinated action taken against multiple suspects, including the apprehension of cartel hitman Trevor Byrne. Through their relentless pursuit of truth and justice, the police offer a beacon of hope in the face of darkness. Their tireless dedication serves as a testament to their commitment to safeguarding communities and dismantling criminal networks. In the volatile landscape of the narcotics underworld, the efforts of law enforcement stand as a formidable force for good, striving to bring down criminals and restore order to society. Nevertheless, an inquiry into the death of Eddie Hutch in March discovered that three persons of interest fled Ireland shortly after the incident. They never returned and became available for the investigation. The Guardian are hopeful that the DPP would issue them with a direction on the case within the next six months. One of these three suspects is Daniel Kinahan. Another suspect facing serious charges in relation to Eddie's elimination is cartel hitman Trevor Byrne. He has been arrested twice in connection with this incident. However, these are not the only charges he faces. He is a suspect for multiple shootings, including the one on crime boss John Gilligan. Currently, the thug is serving a 17 and a half year sentence for weapons related offences and an armed robbery of the bookies. Interestingly, despite being in the game for years and being adept at his trade, he made a very stupid mistake. He left his phone at the scene of the robbery at the bookmakers. But this isn't the first time thugs brought their downfall by their thoughtless acts. Remember the Cox Caswell robbery? Nevertheless, he is deemed one of the most dangerous inmates in the entire prison system. What ignited the lethal Kinahan Hutch feud? Could two close friends become deadly enemies, leading to one eliminating the other, and this all happened over a misunderstanding? That's the story of an almost decade long feud that cost 18 lives, including those of innocent people caught in the crossfire. Gary Hutch, Nephew of the notorious criminal Jerry the Monk Hutch was a senior Kinahan associate and a popular figure in the clan. He enjoyed a deep friendship with Daniel. He was one of the criminals in the 2009 Bank of Ireland tiger kidnapping and robbery. Notably, this was the largest ever heist carried out in the Republic. It brought Gary's gang a staggering 7.6 million euro. Cash rich from his big break, Gary forged ties with the Kinahans who laundered his cash. This relationship evolved into a close friendship with Daniel. The Spanish police surveillance between 2008 and 2010 revealed Gary to be Kenahan's right-hand man. The pair were considered inseparable during their time in Spain. Gary also got close to other cartel members like James Quinn and David and Liam Byrne. The relationship remained good between 2008 and 2013. It couldn't last long though. But this is how the dark alleys of the gangland operate. Friends can turn enemies within minutes over little misunderstandings. That's what happened between Daniel and Gary. The Spanish police started conducting a series of search operations under the famous Operation Shovel on the gang's network in the Costa del Sol. Gary was in Holland at the time of these searches and his absence raised suspicions about his allegiances among the other gang members. In February 2014, a 10 million euro cartel shipment was seized in the UK. Hutch was accused of ratting out information about the shipment. This misunderstanding made him a target for his close yet vindictive friend Daniel Kinahan. According to former Assistant Commissioner Michael O'Sullivan, when you're dealing with these criminals, there's such a level of paranoia between them, a lot of them use coke, and it's very easy to be best friends one day and plotting to kill somebody the next day. That's the way they operate. Sometimes they have a misguided belief that somebody has done something wrong to them and a lot of feuds start like that, both here and abroad. People are just paranoid. 
Following the searches by police, Christy, Daniel and Christopher Jr. faced prison, but only for seven months. The prosecutors couldn't pin them down with concrete evidence. However, it didn't mean that Gary Hutch was out of danger now. Notably, having laundered his ill-gotten gains from the heist, Gary didn't get much back even after the risk of Operation Shovel receded. Gary waited for his return on the investment patiently, but Daniel had a record of ripping off criminals from across Europe under the garb of money laundering. As the relations soured rapidly between the two gangsters, the escalation point came at the funeral of Jean Boylan, Christy Kenahan's first wife and mother of Daniel and Christopher Jr. As friends and family arrived at the cemetery, they were surprised to see a piece of graffiti spelling Gary Hutch, you rat, in bright red spray paint. This peculiar incident was an indicator of how toxic Gary Hutch's name had become. Meanwhile, he was still waiting for returns of his cash from the bank heist. By the late summer of 2014, things started to unravel fast. Both sides high on paranoia, it was only a matter of time for the feud to erupt. Gary tried to reach out to Daniel many times, but that didn't yield any results. Fearing that his days were numbered, he decided to attempt a hit on Kinahan's life. He arranged for an associate to wait outside Daniel's home while he was off partying with the gang, celebrating the birthday of a boxing coach. But Kinahan was back early and already inside. The inexperienced hitman ended up targeting innocent boxer Jamie Moore instead. Obviously, it didn't take Daniel long to figure out who was behind the botched hit. Realising the trouble he was in, Gary fled to Amsterdam and kept a low profile. He moved in between Holland and Dublin, but he knew that he had a target on his back, this time for sure. Desperate for help, he reached out to the man he thought would be able to de-escalate the situation, Jerry Hutch, the monk. Daniel's father was approached in this regard and eventually an agreement was reached. €200,000 would be paid as compensation for the incident, or Gary would be taken out. Additionally, a punishment hit would be executed on Patrick Hutch, Gary's brother, where Daniel would pull the trigger himself. After fulfilling the conditions, the Hutches believed the risk was over. However, Daniel had no intention of letting this go. In 2015, Gary Hutch returned to Costa, believing the risk to his life had subsided, but he was sadly mistaken. He was taken out while returning to his apartment complex. While the underworld operates on its own rules, do you think it was justified for Daniel to take out his friend despite the deal? That was the beginning of a long-standing feud. In 2015, Gary's brother, Derek Delboy, survived an attack inside Mountjoy Prison. In December, an attempt was made to take out Jerry the Monk Hutch. It appeared later that Daniel Kinahan had offered a 1 million euro bounty for the elimination of the powerful gangster. He had even given a 100k euro down payment to enforce a Jerry Mackin for this purpose. However, the hit was futile and Mackin was incarcerated. Then came the infamous Regency Hotel attack, which proved to be a turning point for the Kinahan cartel. While Kinahans were not unknown to the police, they came into the limelight after this attack. Their cartel had suddenly caught the world's attention, much to the chagrin of the crime father, Christy Kinahan, who preferred to keep a low profile in the media. What actually happened at the Regency Hotel? The Regency Hotel incident is a script straight from a crime thriller. A boxing weigh-in was going on in the hotel when assailants entered the scene and started shooting. It caused mayhem among 250 onlookers, including children. The assailants belonged to the Hutch gang and their target was Daniel Kinahan. This was a revenge plan for the elimination of Gary Hutch in 2015 in Spain. While Daniel escaped by sneaking out of the window, David Byrne got hit and died on the spot. This deadly incident led to the attack on Eddie Hutch. He was targeted solely because he was the Hutch kingpin's brother. Notably, the monk went into hiding after the Regency incident. As for Eddie, he wasn't involved in the gang activities. He had multiple convictions for minor criminal offences, including shoplifting and small-time fraud, but he didn't have any link with serious crime. However, he was reported to have helped launder some of the proceeds of crimes orchestrated by his brother. He was investigated by the Criminal Assets Bureau in the late 1990s in this regard. An elimination spree erupted after the Regency attack, depicting Daniel's fury over the incident. As mentioned earlier, six people including Eddie were eliminated by the Kinahans in 2016. The monk went into hiding after the attack. Eddie's funeral was his last public appearance. However, he was arrested and returned to Ireland in 2021. He went on trial for the elimination of David Byrne, but was found not guilty and walked free. As for Eddie Hutch, 
He wasn't involved in crime at the time of his death. He was a well-respected taxi driver in the north inner city. However, he was on the Gardi radar earlier. In fact, he was one of the first targets of the CAB after they seized over £156,000. The bank account involved was linked to Eddie Hutch. Moreover, given that he was the brother of the alleged kingpin of the Hutch gang, he had to be monitored. According to Ken Foy, he was also convicted of fraud a long while ago, along the same time when Christy Kinahan Sr. was taken in for fraud back in the 90s. It is speculated that Christy and Eddie not only knew each other, but also were friendly with each other. While Jerry Hutch is known to have never met Christy Sr., or maybe they crossed paths a few times, Eddie and Christy are known to have had an association. Moreover, when Gary Hutch was hiding in Amsterdam, a few meetings occurred between the Hutch and Kinahan clan that led to the agreement of monetary penalty and punishment. Ken Foy speculates that Eddie may have played a role in some of these meetings. Eddie's name also came in directly during the Regency trial. Paul Murphy, one of the getaway drivers of the attack, was prosecuted for facilitating the hit. He told the court that he was a friend of Eddie Hutch and had driven down to meet him that day. Moreover, there were records of phone calls between the two, but still Eddie wasn't believed to have been involved in the gang activities. He was believed to be a non-violent person, other than the charges of domestic abuse against him. He was also believed to have some knowledge of what happened in the Regency Hotel. How did Dubai become the Kenahan Cartel's luxury bolt hole? Was the Regency attack a severe blow for the Kinahans? The Regency incident sparked a series of Garda operations to prevent killings. Mounting risks caused various senior members of the Kinahan cartel to leave Ireland. Daniel joined his father and brother in Dubai, where the Hoods lived lavishly, while expanding their thriving criminal empire. Daniel continued with his boxing management business to hide his nefarious activities while forging alliances with other narcotic cartels. He managed to cultivate a super cartel which includes all the bigwigs of the narcotics underworld and is suspected of moving almost 300 billion euro of coke into Europe. His wedding in Dubai in 2017 not only became famous for its extravagance, but also because of its guest list, which was a who's who of the crime world. Notably, the authorities used the guest list to identify and clamp down on the super cartel figures. But the sun set on the Kinahan's day in the sun, when the US authorities announced sanctions against the Kinahan father-son's trio and announced a reward of $5 million for information leading to the arrest of senior members of the Kinahan cartel. Four other senior members of the gang, John Morrissey, Bernard Clancy, Sean McGovern and Ian Dixon were also named because of their role in providing material assistance to the Kinahans. This came as a blow for the Kinahans as it led to the freezing of their assets and closure of all of the registered businesses. Daniel was believed to be hiding in Iran as the Guardi amped up their efforts to extradite the crime hoods to Ireland. Some speculate that he would have fled to Pakistan or Afghanistan next, but the Guardi believed that he is in Dubai right now, holding meetings and weighing his options. Prior to the sanctions, Daniel would frequently post selfies with celebrities or on beaches and exotic places. His father, Christy Kinahan, was also active on social media, tweeting about Covid conspiracies and supporting Russian President Vladimir Putin. However, after the sanctions, he seemed to have gone off the grid. The same goes for the crime boss, Daniel. According to Guardi chief Drew Harris, the Kinahans are no longer taking selfies with celebs due to the ongoing clampdown on the organisation. The Irish Times cited him saying, prior to sanctions, that would have been a regular feature. Sunset images of him here with various celebrities, that's all stopped and boxing and the interest in sports overall. If you think about the amount of money that moves through sports and the betting industry, that was a huge, huge risk. All of that has been closed down by the US process. That's very significant. Chief Harris further revealed that an ongoing global operation was underway to bring the Dublin criminals to justice. With the whole Kinahan organised crime group, we are on a long route march to outflank them. And part of that is these bilateral relationships into Dubai, the UAE, understanding what's needed and to provide that to their satisfaction for the judicial processes, said the chief. The attempts to extradite Kinahan mobster Sean McGovern are also in progress. He is accused of involvement in the feud elimination of Noel Kerwin in 2016. McGovern is the primary target for extradition currently as he has an arrest warrant out for him. The Guardi hope that if that goes ahead, it will provide a template for extradition of Daniel Kinahan and other senior cartel members. 
We're doing it for the first time, but there's always going to be a first time, and this is it. We'll work through that. I have every optimism in terms of the response of the Dubai and UAE authorities I have engaged with, said the Garda boss. However, several senior gang members have completed their terms and walked out of prison. These include Lieutenants Liam Brannigan, Dean Howe and Jonathan Harding. Such releases have raised concerns of re-establishing the old guard, but the Guardia are adamant that they won't allow the former members to continue holding the country's law and order hostage. Do you think they'll be successful in accomplishing that? Let us know in the comments. Coming back to Daniel Kinahan's potential implication, why is this development significant? In any case of Kinahan setting foot in Ireland, he would be arrested on sight, and it seems that the Guardia are not leaving things to chance here. A massive file on Kinahan's alleged activities has been submitted to the DPP separately. This one is for a recommendation to implicate Daniel for leading the Kinahan cartel. Kinahan was staying in Iran after getting sanctioned by the US two years ago. Then he returned to Dubai and is based there now. Dubai doesn't have an extradition treaty with Ireland due to which the kingpin believes him to be safe there. How did a small crime group scale to a billion dollar empire? Can you imagine a small-time group becoming a $1 billion enterprise? The scandalous tale of the Kinahans involves flooding Europe with narcotics, violence and black money. Matt Horne, one of Britain's leading criminal investigators, shared what he learned about the Kinahans in 2006 when he joined the UK's serious organised crime agency, the predecessor to NCA. Their name had made quite a mark in the underworld and the police knew them too as well by this time. According to Horn, they were developing intelligence on Christy Kinahan, the then kingpin of the organised crime group, for his involvement in illicit trade, weapons and money laundering. Speaking on a podcast with the Financial Times journalist Miles Johnson, he said that they had assessed from the collected intelligence that the Kinahans were really at the top of the tree, rubbing shoulders with really the highest level criminals from other countries engaged in the same trade. You've got this sports washing. They're kind of infiltrating effectively a global sport and becoming a major player in a global sport as organised criminals. You've got the major money laundering. You've got the huge involvement in the global drug trade. By this time, Christy Kinahan was moving coke through Europe with his criminal enterprise booming. He was operating mainly from Spain back then and had developed creative schemes to increase profits. One of these schemes involved buying up bits of pork and chicken in Europe and selling them in China. Can you imagine the cunning of a man who started off with a small criminal group and made it an international cartel? After getting his own money laundering operations up and running, he began to offer the service to other criminals. In 2010, the cartel hit a snag with a multinational crackdown named Operation Shovel, leading to 30 of the gang members getting arrested. Nevertheless, the cartel thrived and the Spanish police couldn't bring down the senior members because of faulty evidence. The criminal enterprise had turned into a global investment service for the gangsters. The Kinahan cartel is infamous for its sophisticated operations, use of encrypted communication systems, widespread network of associates and money laundering techniques. They hire enforcers and contract killers to liquidate the rival gang members or those posing a threat to their enterprise. According to an investigation funded by the European Union, the heart of the cartel's operations relies on a network of front companies. These entities play a pivotal role in facilitating the trafficking of heroin, cocaine and various illicit drugs, as well as the laundering of proceeds from their sales. In a pattern reminiscent of the Mafia, the cartel has established food businesses to serve as conduits for the drug movement and money laundering. Additionally, real estate investments are employed to conceal illicit assets, as highlighted by the investigation. The cartel is also known for its violence. A report by the European Monitoring Centre for Drug and Drug Addiction linked the Kinahan cartel to 20 eliminations in Belgium, Ireland, the Netherlands and Spain. Leaked records shed light on Daniel Kinahan's involvement in creating several companies in the United Arab Emirates, a federation of seven Persian Gulf states, including Dubai. This endeavour was carried out with the blessing of local authorities and the assistance of at least two local intermediaries who assumed the on-paper ownership of a significant stake in these businesses. In the UAE, both Kinahan brothers ventured into various industries such as food, clothing, textiles and business services. Alongside, they ventured into management and aviation consultancy, 
leveraging the business-friendly tax policies in the Emirati-free zones. The leaked records unveiled previously undisclosed connections between MTK Global, a global boxing promotion firm, and Dukashu Consultancy, a critical Kinahan-affiliated company that has faced US sanctions. Bringing Kinahan to justice, a long road to Dublin? When can the world see Daniel Kinahan in guard at handcuffs? Now that the Kinahans are cornered, what is their next move? Let's dive into this gripping saga. The answer would be it's a long way to go before we see that happening. While the Guardi have amped up their efforts to collect incriminating evidence against him, there is still a lot of work to be done. However, the possibility of Daniel on trial in the Irish Republic has become palpable. Contrary to the speculations, the father-son trio is still residing in Dubai and operating from their headquarters. They might be in and out of the region, but it still remains their abode. Garda boss Harris has confirmed this information with the UAE authorities. Another misconception about Daniel Kinahan is that he is on the run or most wanted. That's not the case. The major restriction against him currently is the US sanctions. Why are these sanctions problematic? They lock the three Kinahans and their four associates out of the US banking system and curtail any US entity or individual from dealing with them. After these restrictions, it's been impossible for the crime boss to continue his career as a leading promoter in professional boxing. That being said, Kinahan is still at liberty to travel in and out of Dubai. No country in any part of the world has demanded his extradition or put him under the wanted or absconder status. For an extradition request, either Ireland or the US needs to bring criminal charges against him. The extradition process is solely designed to bring a charged criminal before court for a trial. The reason Guardi have increased the efforts for collaboration between the UAE and Republic is that once slapping the criminal charges, the Irish police will need agreement from the UAE to extradite Kinahan. For now, both efforts are being conducted parallel. Kinahan is under investigation on both sides of the Atlantic. While the Guardi are awaiting a direction from the DPP based on the submitted file, the Americans are also investigating the crime hoods and gathering evidence around the world. However, just like the Irish investigations, the US inquests haven't reached a decisive point yet. For all the pieces to fall into place, meticulous work is essential. The evidence must be robust enough to prevent the Kinahans from evading charges once again. The world eagerly awaits how these investigations unfold and whether Gardi can successfully extradite the Kinahans from Dubai. With bated breath, observers await answers to these pivotal questions.